thought I'd talk you through how we go about fencing in this part of the world. I have literally put up kilometers of fencing. I'm not saying the way that I'm doing it is the best way, but it's the way that we do things around here. So I guess the first thing is, when you're fencing with barbed wire, we run the fence to about, or we drive the fence post to about 140 centimeters above the ground. Um, if you get a grant, um, typically you have to have fencing that covers about one, one meter 20. So you just leave a bit of overhead. So we drive the post to about 130, 140 thereabouts. So I've went with high tensile steel, so that's two millimeter high tensile steel barbed wire. Traditionally, I would have used 2.5 mil soft steel, mild steel, and there's just a trend now away from that. It's worked fine for years, but it does tend to sag over time. And you have to grind and give it a, a, tighten it up a bit more. So for the first time, I'm trying now this uh, new high tensile steel. And my initial thoughts are, yep, it's definitely much, much harder. And one of the consequences is it's a wee bit harder to cut. So mild steel is, is actually quite easy. You work a wee bit harder with, uh, with the high tensile stuff. That being said, I would continue to use the two mil high tensile uh, barbed wire. We are putting um, five strands on and aiming to have it at around 130 at the top. So that's about a foot, 26 centimeters of a spacing between each row. The method we use to strain the posts, traditionally we would have used a strut at an angle and then a post in the ground, but it's quite awkward to get the right tension onto the, the main strainer in the corner. It's just, it's difficult. So nowadays there's a trend towards using a strainer and an upright post, bracing between them, and then using wire lapped to, to tension it. I think one of the benefits there is it's just faster to put up. You can get a good tight brace on the strainer um, with minimal effort. When you're bracing a strainer, you always put the support and the brace facing the direction that you're pulling against. So we are pulling the wire in this direction, so we brace on the right hand side. And when you get into a corner, you brace in both directions. So what we do is we make a simple mortise joint. To 
hold the brace at both ends. I prefer to use a screw to hold the brace in position because it generally doesn't split the wood and it's quite easy to drive. If you're hammering it can be more difficult to keep it in position. What do you do? Would they just jump it or oh, they, they jump it? Through. Oh, no. huh? They jump it. Along, along ahead, they don't they jump at us, that handy. But if they, if they you know, come from this side, they, they jump it. They come from that side, they might jump it that handy. It wouldn't. Having put in place the support, you then get some wire, lap it around from low on the strainer to a high point on the support post, and you just tighten it. So that helps keep this in place. So if the strainer tries to go this way and push this back, it's pulling against itself and that locks it into position. So one other point is, if you're new to fencing, you might think that the, the thing you should be doing is running a perfectly straight line from one strainer to the other. And in practice, it doesn't work that well. It's better to follow the, the line of the land because if you just run perfectly straight lines between your strainers, you'll end up with big gaps at the bottom of the fence where animals can get through. So just follow the line of the land. It'll be a wee bit up and down, but that's fine. With regards to the placement of strainers, um, the, regulations the regulations in Northern Ireland, if you get a grant, is you have to put a strainer within every 150 metres. In practice, it'll be much more frequent, especially if you've got small fees like I have. So you put a strainer at any point where you're changing direction. So you run to a corner, put a strainer, run the next direction. So if there's any change of direction, even a, you know, 20, 30, like 30 degrees, you put a strainer. If there's a, a change in elevation, you put a strainer at the point and change. So you you're trying to get reasonably straight lines. And in practice, there's always gonna be a little bit of a curve. Maybe if you've got big open fields, but around here, you're generally following a hedge and there's generally a little bit of a curve. So a curve is okay within reason. When you're driving steeples, treat them as a guide. Don't hammer them fully home. Leave the wire room to move, so if you need to tighten it at a future point in time, you can do so. There's a couple of benefits to using the high tensile steel. Actually, there's three. Firstly, it supposedly doesn't sag as much over time. So it's the first time I've used it, so I don't know the answer to that. I haven't confirmed it. But a lot of people recommend it for that reason. The second benefit is when you're putting it up, you do not have to use as many fence posts because you can do longer spans between the posts. So in Northern Ireland, the regulations are, if you're getting a grant, that if you're using high ten tensile steel, uh, barbed wire, you can put the posts 3.5 meters apart. And if you're using mild steel, the posts have to be three meters apart. So look at, it shouldn't sag. It reduces the number of fence posts you need. And it is cheaper, surprisingly. It's cheaper than the mild steel. Maybe that's simply because there isn't as much demand for it yet as people are still primarily using mild steel, but I can see no reason to continue using the old barbed wire. And the only downside that I have experienced is it's just a little bit harder to cut. But apart from that, and that is manageable as well. So we finished fencing, quadrophenia, floods a lot, and now little dog. So just one more field to do, and that is the other field, the other side of the lane. 
After I finish the fencing, I have two big jobs to do. The first of which is to put the cages around the trees and the second is to mulch around the trees. Ideally by now, I would have had the mulch down because the grass is getting quite high and it's creating a lot of competition for nutrients and I suppose to a lesser extent water around here because we get so much. So yeah, as soon as I get the fencing finished, straight on to getting the wire guards up and then mulching around the trees. So until next time, good luck!